Hi, Linda, and smiles. This is Jill um, with Crick Flex. Um, somebody with the, the screen name starts with smiles just sent me a message on one of my videos. Um, brand new to the cameo and wanted to know how to do a two foot piece. And Linda, you just sent me an I am or a instant message on my YouTube or not my YouTube, my Facebook, wanting to know on Elsa. So I picked Elsa only because that's the one you asked for. So I'm going to go into my Google Images, and this is the Elsa I found that's 1500 by 1351 DPI. I open it in another tab. I do not copy from here. I open it in another tab, and see how big she gets. That's where I copy the image, and then I put her on my mat. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the white. Now, whoever's newer to the silhouette, um, I'm going to try and go from the beginning to the end. However, I am not going to assemble it. Um, I've got... Um, I don't need one of these now, and I'm not going to assemble it. I'm just going to show you how I make it. And let me get... Sorry about that, but my watch is driving me nuts. Um, okay, there we go. Now, let me go to trace, select the trace area. Now, Smiles, I'm not really sure. You said you were new to the Cameo, and I'm not sure if you've upgraded to the um, Designer Edition. I actually have the Business Edition. Um, but you do need to have at least the Designer Edition in order to do this. And I'm not sure if you do, so I'm, I'm going to go under the assumption that you do. And I'm going to trace the image first. And I'm going to take the high pass filter off. Then I'm going to take my threshold down here and I'm going to drag it until everything is solid yellow. And once it's solid yellow, I am going to do a trace and detach. Now I'm going to take this white away and I'm going to delete it. There I've got her image. See she's kind of scraggly around the edges there. Let me see if I can tune her up a little bit here. Um, these I don't know if I necessarily need but I'm just going to move them aside. And let me get some of these. Let me do a trace and just see if I can get her a little bit crisper. And let's see here. And let's go not quite so, um, let's try a trace image and see if that cuts some of that white away. I did the trace outer edge. Then I'm going to box the whole image in. I'm going to go to Object, Modify, and Crop. There, now it took away those scraggly white pieces that were up here in the, in the hair. You couldn't see them that well, but I could see them. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here. For the more advanced users, I would do this. I would duplicate this image. Then I would take and I'm going to cut her head off right there. Then I'm going to delete this piece and I'm going to grab. I want to grab this hair and I want to fine tune it. So I'm going to fine tune it. So I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to put it on the curve. And I'm just going to kind of take and go around these edges a little bit where there's kind of some scragglers. And there we go. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get this out of here. And then I'm going to send this to the back. And I'm going to slide it in there. And the reason I'm doing that is, let me see, I'm going to kind of, elongated a little bit so I can line it up here with this little bump on the side of her head. Um, I do want it to line up. There, I like that better because I had that piece that was that was just kind of, kind of sticking out there and I didn't want to just cut it off. So now I'm going to take this whole image and I'm going to group it. There we go. Now, um, I always do my white um, offset I did learn that I didn't know until the other day that I can go my offset here so that I can do my internal or my um, external offset. I'm going to pick, whoops, i got to pick the image first. That would help. The default is 0.125. I'm going to leave it at that. 
and I'm going to color it white and I'm going to make the line white just it doesn't print it out red but just for my visual so for me to see it the way I want to see it I make my line white as well I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because I'm going to use my base to be white now this piece I'm going to go ahead and move over here first oh I forgot let me see this is going to be a two footer so let me put them together she's 22.3 I would probably have just left her at 22.3 but I'm going to pull her closer to 20 22 she was at 22.3 I'm going to pull her a little bit to get her to the 24 she's 24 a little bit yeah the white's not going to fit on there, so I'm going to take it down just a hair. You know, I don't think it really um, matters when you say a two-foot piece. It's close enough to two feet that um, I'm not going to be splitting hairs over it. So what I'm going to do is take the background piece first, and I'm going to put it on my mat and make sure uh, I'm zoomed in a little too far that the top of her head doesn't go off and the bottom doesn't go off. And I'm going to bring it so the hand doesn't go off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my straight knife and I'm going to put it on straight because it was on curve and I am going to cut this piece off. Now see the number at the bottom? I almost pointed with it at my finger. Down here at the bottom where the, the little knife is, it says um, .141. I move this until it says zero so that I know my line is straight. See, the number goes away. Now I know my line is straight. So remember to turn your knife off unless you have it where it automatically turns it off. I don't because I like to do cut after cut. This is going to be turned to be cut as a separate piece. And this is going to be. Now when I go to put it together, all I do is lay these two pieces together like this and then I take and I take my paper cutter and I'm just going to draw you so you have an idea. Uh, my paper's 12 inches, so I'm going to make this 12 inches long. I cut a quarter of an inch piece. That's not 12 inches long. Sure. Look, well, I guess it is. Looks like well, whatever. Um, I'm going to color it white just so you can see what I do. This strip of paper that I cut with the paper cutter, I'm going to move this over to the gray so you can get a better idea. I put these two, I butt them up together. This one I kind of tilted when I was moving it around here. Um, I butt them together after I cut them out, and then I put ATG tape down this line where these two pieces are together. Then I take this piece, it can be a quarter of an inch wide, or not a quarter, I use about a half an inch wide. You can make it wider if you'd like. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter how wide it is, it's whatever your preference is. And I run ATG down this as well. And then I lay it on top of where I have these seam together. That's how I hold my base together. Again, this has got ATG tape all the way down it. And I lay these pieces of paper together and I hold them together with my hand and I run a strip of ATG because those ATG, um, I'll, part of it will get on this side and part will get on this side and it will hold them together while you finish taping it together. Um, that wasn't straight, but anyway, it will hold it while you piece this over it. Um, if I color this black, you can, whoops. I'm going to color it black so you can see this is how I would do it. I would tape it, then I would take a scissors and clip, clip it off there. Actually, I would bring it down all the way and clip it off here and clip it off here on my cut lines so that it was uniform. Okay, now we've got the base cut out and ready to go. Oh, I know what I did. I turned it for you like this. So these are the pieces that it would entail to do the base. All right. Um, and color that white and I'm going to move these over here. There are the three elements for the base. Now, when I move her over here, this is how I would do it. I want her two feet. I would take two 12 by 12 sheets of paper. I'm going to go in here and I am going to make this box, whoops, 
makes this box a 12 by 12. Okay, and I'm going to color it white. And this is, again, only to show you what I do. Then I'm going to duplicate it and make another one. I would butt these two together just like that, and I would take another strip that I just did here and do the exact same thing and tape them together, bring this to the front, and um, I would tape these two pieces together so that I had a 12 by, or a 12 by 24 sheet of paper for her to fit on. See, she would fit on there. Um, when you send this through your printer, you have to have a 12 by uh, a 12 inch printer. Um, that is essential. I'm not going to get into showing a videotape on how you can do it with an 11, 8.5 by 11 printer because I don't use an 8.5 by 11. You can cut this in a bunch of sections, but I'm not going to do that. Um, this is only for those of you that have a 12 inch printer. You have to have a 12 inch in order to do it the two foot. If you want it on an 8.5 by 11 inch printer, you're going to have to dissect it and you're going to have to take your sheet of paper and, whoops, I didn't mean to go over there in the tab, and you're going to have to make your, um, let me go back in here and just show you, unlock your ratio so you can do, I forgot to pick my box again, and delete in here, and I'm going to go 8.5, and I'm going to do 11. There's going to be your sheet of paper. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what pieces and where you're going to have to cut it. I'm going to move her to the front, and you're going to have to figure out where to cut it uh, because she's going to have to be cut up. What I always try to, to do is cut on where there would be a seam. For instance, on her, there would be a seam along her the small of her back down to her rear end, there's a seam here by her dress where it changes texture. You would have to be very um, deliberate in where you're going to cut it in order for her to cut out and look nice. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in here because I'm working on a 12 by tw um, 24. I'm going to take my curved knife and I'm going to start cutting. And this is where I'm going to make my cut. Again, the, the folks that are asking me, I'm not really sure what printer you have, which really makes a difference. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off here because when I do my pieces, I'm going to have this loaded with glitter. And so you can disguise where this was cut. Number one, when you piece this together, it fits right on your base and see she fits right on that she's gonna fit right on here when I when I put her together to print her out she's gonna fit right on there you're gonna to have to make sure that you put on your registration marks so that your registration marks are to 12 by 24 um, these pieces have to be taped together you need to make sure when you print it you feed it into your printer with this piece this would be the upside because when it goes through your printer, it's going to flip around and print on the opposite side that you fed it through. So you always remember to make this piece on the top when you lay it in your printer. Otherwise, this seam is going to be showing. If you put it in upside down, it's going to print on this piece and it's going to be very, very apparent. It's going to show a lot. So don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Always make sure that you place this facing up. This is the second part of the dress. Let me see if this is going to fit. And I think I can make that fit. Yes, I can make it fit. So there's my second piece. So this would be a 12 by 24. When I get her all cut out, it printed and cut, it, cut out. And another thing, some folks ask me how come my printer prints so incredibly clear. I use quality print always. I never use fine. I never use the default of what would be called considered a draft printing. I always use the best. The best quality that you, your printer is capable of doing, that's what I print on. It makes a world of a difference. 
Once I piece these together and I print and cut her out, she's going to lay right there and this piece is going to fit right in there. Two simple pieces. They aren't all that easy. They aren't all that simple. There's pieces that are more complicated. Um, you know, because you want to make sure always wherever you're going to do your cuts, when you're piecing these together, always make sure that they are in an area that they're not going to show a lot. Now look, when I piece her together, she's absolutely perfect. What I do on these flakes is I put them in a group. Then what I do is I go, I always forget where it is. I go to my offset. I leave the offset at the default. And let me do this again here with the line in the white. Oops, line, white. Why is that? Did I not pick that? Oh, well, I don't know what happened here, but I don't want that top piece. This piece I'm not going to use, but I've got it grouped together. Anyway, I would cut out just the one snowflake. I wouldn't cut out this little tiny piece here because I don't have anything to suspend it. And then I put that in her hand, and then I use glitter and glitter it up. Now, what I also do on my Elsa's is I take tool, and I have sparkle tool that you can get at Joanne, no, 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 Hobby Lobby. has real glittery, glittery, sparkly tool. I do this. I cut it out, print and cut, add my glitter, then I put tool on top of it, and I just go through the dark area here, um, attaching it under her arm, or ta and then attaching it here. And um, it really adds to it. Again, not every single two-foot piece is going to be that simple. This one was pretty easy because she's thin. Some of them require more cutting. Um, again, if you're using an 8 and a half 11 by 11 inch printer, you could get the top half of her body. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You're going to have to figure out, but probably coming up through here and around through her arm, maybe cut out this whole piece here, cut this piece separate, whatever you can fit, but you're going to have to put your papers together. Um, what you can do is on the business um, software, which I haven't learned how to use yet. I just got the business software not long ago. Um, I haven't had a need, but there is a feature on it that will take your images and cut it in pieces like a puzzle for you but the way that it's going to cut it is going to be in squares and I don't I would I don't think I would ever use it because I would never cut my pieces in squares because I, that means I could get a line right through a face or whatever I don't do that I spend a lot of time cutting them up so that they don't show when I put them all together they look like they're all one solid piece but anyway, um, I hope that helped. Again, what you need is you need to trace your area first, trace your image. You're going to do your offset secondly so that you've got your base. And the last thing that you're going to do is cut your image, but make sure you have your mat so you can get a visual here and you know where to cut. And for instance, move your pieces around so you know if they're going to fit on the mat. Um, cut them out to print and cut and see that'll fit in there and she will fit on there so she can be done in two pieces and I hope that helped you guys let me know if you have any questions um, I'm sorry if I went really fast um, I've done so many of these videos um, I'm not real sure uh, where you're how much you do know but anyway if you have any questions just let me know thank you and have a good night bye bye